Let's get into it, Coach Gallen News. I can't believe the nerve of this guy. You know what? I like that he's standing up for the flag, right? You know, as an American, that's what he should be doing. But if you don't know, pro-Palestine rallies breaking out in New York on the campuses. They're trying to take down American flags, put up Palestinian flags, not even touching the Israeli flags. But, you know, I've touched on that enough. The fact that this is more about America than it is about anything else, destabilizing things. But, but Eric Adams, mayor extraordinaire, has something to say about this whole thing. Let's get into it. That's our flag, folks. Go we'll take over our buildings and put another flag up. That may be fine to other people, but it's not to me. My uncle died defending this country. And these men and women put their lives on the line. And it's despicable that schools will allow another country flag to fly in our country. So blame me for being proud to be an American. And I thank Commissioner Daughtry for putting that flag back up. We're not surrendering our way of life to anyone. There are people that we have been watching in organizations that are not part of the campus. We've been very clear. There are individuals and organizations that are not students. We're seeing a shift in tactics that are being used, destruction of property, destructions of cameras, and so, so many other things. We saw paraphernalia and pamphlets about disruptions. There's a series of things that the intelligence division has brought to make a determination that there's an influence going on right now. Now, we know that people would rather us put in a nice neat little bow but that is not the way law enforcement operate, and we're not going to release any information that is too sensitive to release at this time. We know there are outside individuals that have been influencing of this issue. Very, very interesting. Now, of course, shout out to him for, you know, speaking up about it, being upset about it. You know, definitely condolences to the uncle who made the ultimate sacrifice. Of course, of course, you have to say those things. And also shout out to him for calling out the fact that these are not all students. Just just a month ago, it was just me saying this. I got bashed. I got bashed because of it by Jimmy Dore. Now everybody's starting to see that there are these other influences, these other forces, these professional tactics that are taking place, and it just doesn't make any sense. But for Eric Adams, okay, all that aside, but for Eric Adams to be like, you're not going to do that. We're not going to. First off, let's just bring up real quick. How many pride flags? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. But how many were on schools, parks, everywhere, being raised up, hailed, all that stuff? Huh? You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, both, both of those flags are a problem if they're being put above the American flag, just straight up. But <laughs> Eric Adams looking at a camera and being like, we are not you're not going to destroy our way of life let me be clear i'm the only i'm the only person who gets to destroy this city okay i'm the only one who gets to destroy this city <laughs> eric Ad let let me take you through a timeline of eric adams really really quick i'm just going to go back give you a little flash back of eric adams being so upset that there are people trying to destabilize his city. Let me just go back a year for you guys. Listen to this. New Yorkers to eat less meat to combat climate change. Food is the third biggest source of cities emissions right after builders and transportation. But all food is not created equal. The vast majority, majority of food uh, that is contributing to our emission crisis lies in meat and dairy products. 
According to new data released by the city, 20% of the Big Apple's greenhouse gas emissions come from food production and consumption. And the mayor is now vowing to reduce the city's food-based emissions at agencies by 33% in the next seven years and challenging the private sector to follow suit. And this week, we are... Very, very interesting. He was literally trying to get New Yorkers to eat less meat and wanted to track their meat consumption okay i don't know i don't know i'm just saying i'm just saying he's really mad about the palestine flags and i am too i don't want to see that i think that's ridiculous but also hey man those kids and those antifa members and all those influences on those protests they're not the only people destroying the city okay i'm just putting it out there you might want to look in the mirror a little bit, my friend. <laughs> like, just a little bit. Look, I'm going to show you another thing. A little timeline of this guy. Okay, let's get to robot police. First, there is Digidog sniffing out danger. Then there is the GPS dart tracking cars driven by people up to no good. And you might run into this roundish robot keeping an eye on places like Times Square. We want the public to know that the use of these technologies will be transparent, consistent, and always done in collaboration with the people that we serve. The NYPD showcasing three new tools that will be rolled out in the coming months. Pilot programs, the department says, linking cops with new technology, especially during extreme situations. In hostage negotiations, counterterrorism incidents, and other situations as needed. Digidog was originally launched during the de Blasio administration, but the program was suspended. Civil rights activists said it was an example of over-aggressive policing. Today, Mayor Adams barked back at those complaints. Digidog is out of the pound. Digidog is now part of the toolkit that we are using. Similar robots have been used in places like airports and college campuses, cameras and two-way communications, connecting police with people who need help. The GPS Dart, already in use, launched in some cases at so-called ghost cars, illegal rides. You this is incredible. The Digi Dog, listen, listen. The Digi Dog is out of the pound, okay? And we're only going to use it in counterterrorism. Flash to bank robbery. Flash to two guys fighting in the middle of the street. Flash to, <laughs> flash to suspected some some probable cause flash to just following someone down the street because they're out so late oh my gosh this guy's amazing the blasio wouldn't even put this thing out the blasio's like listen they hate me enough they hate me enough already you know i did the whole thing with the fries and the burger element i can't i can't do robot police i can't do it in the same year i can't do this Eric Adams is like, I got no problem. Let's do this. Let's destroy the city. <laughs> He's, I'm telling you, man, this guy is the worst thing to happen to the city. De Blasio was bad, 100%. But this guy, does, does everybody remember when he was suggesting <laughs> that the illegal immigrants live with, <laughs> with New Yorkers, <laughs> with the citizens in their spare rooms because rent's so high? If you have a spare room, it could comp they could compensate you. Do you have any? He was he was suggesting somebody get hurt in the worst possible way because that's all that was going to happen if this actually went through. Chip, that could be welcoming migrants. That's right. Mayor Adams also suggesting today that the city could pay people to house migrants in private residences. Sharon Crowley has more on the mayor's idea and whether he has the power to actually make it policy. Sharon. Yeah, Steve, New Yorkers willing to take in an asylum seeker into their home could be paid by the city for doing just that. It's a hypothetical right now. The mayor's considering every option as he looks to find new ways to house thousands of newcomers who continue to arrive in the city each week. The closer we bring the asylum seekers and the migrants to everyday New Yorkers, the easier it will be for them to transition into uh, society. Mayor Adams. Worst idea I've ever heard. Worst idea I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> okay, okay. So we got this guy. Okay, he's from Yemen, you know, or somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where he, wherever he says he's from, he's from. Um, he's just going to stay in your house for a little while 
and uh you know just just get real close to him because the closer you can get to him you know the quicker he'll become an american you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah just let him in your house if there's any problems just call the robot police robot police will be at your door listen stay out of the way of the robot police it can't really differentiate who's guilty and who's innocent not quite yet so just try and push him in front of it you dive the other way bada bing bada boom hopefully you know we we handle the situation properly okay I, no promises no promise <laughs> what <laughs> every idea every idea is crazy every idea is either authoritarian or crazy that comes out of this guy's mouth let's track meat consumption stop eating so much meat <laughs> what <laughs> let's have illegal immigrants just live with the residents problem solved am i right if there's enough room for them there's got to be enough room for these people coming over am i right oh my gosh and then it, because of his own decisions because all those things that i just showed you those cost money cost money to look into cost money to make those ridiculous robots all that stuff costs money this guy's just spending it and because of his own decisions then he gets to this point Month after month, I stood up and I said, this is going to come to a neighborhood near you. Well, we're here. We're here. We're getting no support on this national crisis. And we're receiving no support. And let me tell you something, New Yorkers. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. Every <laughs> everybody, everybody was like, oh, man, okay. The mayor is here. Finally, we're going to get some answers. Whew. It's been a long time, but you know, he'll obviously know what to do. I mean, he wouldn't come here unless he had a plan. Guys, this is going to completely destroy the city. You have to understand, the decisions that I have made were the wrong decisions okay there are not enough robot police to police all of these illegal immigrants i don't know what to do you guys would not let me into your houses with these illegals and now we have a problem <laughs> this is terrible okay it's gotham city and there is no batman there's no batman in this version <laughs> what huh what happened and then he's just like ah eh, screw it 53 million 53 million for a pilot program. <laughs> it wasn't even the full thing. It was a test. 53 million to test it out. We're not giving people American Express people. Okay. I'm just giving them money so they can, you know, walk around. It's going to help the economy. They all end up buying black market things. Oh, man. Air gas. So, again, God bless them. For, for being against the Palestinian flag being raised. But, bro, in this case, you got other things to worry about. I'm just saying. I'm not saying don't worry about it. But the gentleman, there was a gentleman who handled the flag situation already. He made sure that flag came down. He put up an American flag. He handled business. He did what he had to do. You, you have problems, okay? You spent money on robot police. Where are they? You spent $53 million on a pilot program. What happened? <laughs> There's rant. Oh my gosh. This is just a impromptu. Let's see if I can even spell this name. Steve Buscemi. You guys know Steve Buscemi? Punched by random person. What? I'm not even kidding. I'm not even joking right now. Let me see this. <laughs> Bro, I'm not getting around. I'm not getting around. Let's shrink this. Steve Buscemi got punched in the face by a random person. What? Just for no reason. They just saw him. Probably didn't even know him. They're just like, ah, this is a guy. Ah, uh, here's one. This guy got punched in the face randomly so again again i'm so glad that he took that stand and say oh we are not gonna 
you're not gonna we're not gonna do our way of life you're not gonna take away our way of life what way of life are you talking about this dystopian nightmare city that you've created <laughs> he's like what are you talking about in fact let's be real these kids setting up these protests it actually falls pretty in line with everything that he's done you know what i mean it's it's pr it's pretty it's pretty perfect for what he has laid out like this is just like one of the things you know i can't even believe he's mad about it <laughs> i'm kidding of course of course you got to be mad about that kind of thing especially when there's darker forces that are looming around that whole that whole protest that whole encampment but man this guy ha i just did i just did a piece on my main channel about the crime in new york and what police are going through it's getting crazy this guy needs to really focus in he really needs to focus in i mean there are black kids on the street that don't even know the word computer according to the governor <laughs> they got a whole lot of problems in new york you better not touch that flag. What? Hey, hey, hey. Didn't you just release robot police on the population of New York? <laughs> Didn't you just take $53 million from somewhere and put it in the debit cards for illegal immigrants? Didn't you just tell the entire city that their whole city is going to be destroyed? Didn't you just do all that? Oh my gosh. Still, still don't like, still dislike de Blasio more. But this guy's just ridiculous. Again, it's so hard with a lot of these things where you're like, nah, this is not by design. It's like, are you sure this many bad decisions in a row is not by design? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm glad he had a problem with the flag being up, though, you know? I'm glad, I'm glad he had an issue with that. That's that's good at least. You know? <laughs> I don't know, man. Eric Adams, man. It's just just man. Gonna run for president one day. You guys ready for that? You guys ready for that? <laughs> Gonna run for president. Might even win. Oh my gosh. Cause voting for him, if you don't vote for him, you'll be branded as racist. And by then racism will be illegal and the definition of it will be ever changing. You know, so you'll just you'll go to jail if you don't vote for him. So you'll have to. He'll be the most popular president ever just because, you know, and that's that's the way things are going. I mean, that's what it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous, though, man. I keep following this guy's timeline of decisions and it's just thing after thing is just ugh, ugh. he's the worst. He's the worst. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this whole thing. Raising up flags that are Palestinian in 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 replacing american flags i think it's absolutely horrendous it's not something that should happen it doesn't matter how passionate you are about the movement be passionate about the movement protest if you must do your thing try to keep it lawful stay out of trouble but leave leave the flag alone leave america alone you're talking about a a a, a a situation that has to do with Israel and Palestine and you're in New York and out of those two things you think well the American flag has to come down the American flag is what makes it so you can actually protest and run around the way you are but that's the thing that has to come down and the Palestinian flag has to get run up you want Pal you want Palestinian rules too huh you want those oh you should you should check out those Palestinian rules I'm just saying I'm just saying I don't mean like, oh, what Israel, do I mean their rules. You should go check it out. Go check out that Middle Eastern, that, that, that Middle East rule, what that's like. Go check that out around the world. Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Other than that, I'm out.